Did you know that modern Greeks share more DNA with ancient Greeks than most Europeans share with their own ancestors from 2,000 years ago? While other European populations were dramatically altered by waves of migration and conquest, the Greek people managed to maintain their genetic identity through thousands of years of history. From Viking invasions in the north to conquests in the south, Europe's genetic landscape was constantly reshuffled. Yet somehow the descendants of ancient Athens and Sparta kept their ancestral DNA largely intact. Today we're going to explore one of the most fascinating genetic stories in human history. We'll trace the Greek people from their very first arrival in the Aegean region, through interactions with Neolithic farmers, countless invasions, and even examine how island populations differ from mainland Greeks. We'll dive deep into mtDNA, Y chromosome data, and haplogroups to understand exactly how the Greeks preserved their genetic heritage when so many other populations could not. This is a story that spans over 8,000 years and involves some surprising discoveries that have changed how we view European genetic history. Let's start at the very beginning, around 7,000 BC, when the first farmers arrived in what we now call Greece. These weren't the ancestors of modern Greeks yet, but rather Neolithic farmers who migrated from Anatolia. These early farmers brought with them revolutionary technologies, completely transforming the region. They settled throughout the Greek mainland and islands, establishing some of Europe's first farming communities. Archaeological evidence from sites like Nea Nicomedia shows these people had sophisticated societies with complex social structures. Their DNA tells us they belonged primarily to haplogroups like G2A for males and various European Neolithic lineages for females. These Neolithic farmers would form the genetic foundation that later populations would build upon. But here's where the story gets interesting. Around 2800 to 2200 BC, a new group arrived that would fundamentally change the region's genetic makeup. These were Indo-European speaking peoples, likely arriving from the Pontic Caspian steppes north of the Black Sea. They brought with them horses, advanced bronze working techniques, and most importantly, the linguistic ancestors of the Greek language. Genetic analysis shows these newcomers carried significant amounts of what scientists call steppe ancestry. The male Y chromosome haplogroups shifted dramatically during this period. We see the introduction of R1b and R1a lineages, which are strongly associated with these Indo-European migrations. The mtDNA also shows changes, though less dramatic, with new lineages like H1 and H3 appearing alongside the existing Neolithic ones. This mixing created what we can call the Proto-Greek population, around 2000 BC. But the genetic story was far from over. The Bronze Age brought even more complexity to the Greek genetic landscape. During this period, we see evidence of connections with Minoan Crete and other Eastern Mediterranean civilizations. The famous Mycenaean civilization, which flourished from 1600 to 1100 BC, represents a crucial period in Greek genetic development. Recent DNA analysis of Mycenaean remains shows they were genetically very similar to modern Greeks. This is remarkable because it means the core Greek genetic profile was already established over 3,000 years ago. The Mycenaeans carried a mixture of Neolithic farmer ancestry, Indo-European steppe ancestry, and smaller amounts of what researchers call Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry. This three-way mixture would become the genetic signature of the Greek people. Now let's talk about the mtDNA patterns, because they tell us something fascinating about Greek population history. Modern Greek mtDNA is dominated by haplogroups H, U, T, and J. Haplogroup H, which is the most common across Europe, makes up about 45% of Greek maternal lineages. But here's what's interesting. The specific subtypes of H found in Greeks often have ancient origins in the region. Haplogroup U, particularly U5, connects Greeks to some of the earliest European hunter-gatherers. Haplogroups T and J show connections to the ancient Near East and Anatolia, reflecting those early Neolithic farmer migrations. What's remarkable is how stable these proportions have remained over time. Even after thousands of years of history, invasions and population movements, the basic mtDNA profile has stayed consistent. The Y chromosome story is equally fascinating but shows more variation. Modern Greek males primarily belong to haplogroups E, 1B, 1B, R, 1B, R, 1A, I2, and J2. E1B1B 1B 1B is particularly interesting because it's found throughout the Balkans and has ancient roots in the region. Some researchers believe it may have been present in Greece since Neolithic times. R1B and R1A, as we mentioned, 
came with those Indo-European speakers around 2800 BC. J2 shows connections to the ancient Near East and may have arrived with various Mediterranean trading peoples. I2 connects Greeks to broader Balkan populations and has very ancient European origins. The proportions of these haplogroups vary somewhat between different regions of Greece. For example, northern Greeks tend to have more R1a, reflecting their proximity to Slavic populations. Southern Greeks and Islanders often have higher frequencies of E1b1b and J2. But despite these regional variations, the overall pattern remains distinctly Greek. Now let's examine how island populations differ from mainland Greeks. This is where genetics gets really interesting. Islands like Crete, the Cyclades, and others in the Aegean show some unique genetic characteristics. Crete, for instance, has maintained particularly high levels of that ancient Neolithic farmer ancestry. This makes sense because islands are naturally protected from large-scale population movements. The Cretan population shows continuity stretching back to Minoan times, around 2700 BC. DNA analysis of ancient Minoans reveals they were very similar to modern Cretans, just with slightly higher levels of Near Eastern ancestry. The Cycladic islands, including famous ones like Santorini and Mykonos, show similar patterns of genetic continuity. These island populations often preserved older genetic lineages that became diluted on the mainland. For example, certain mitochondrial DNA lineages that were common in the early Bronze Age are still found at higher frequencies on some islands. The Y chromosome patterns on islands also tend to be more diverse, suggesting they served as refuges for ancient lineages. This island effect is crucial for understanding how Greeks maintained their genetic identity. When invading armies swept across the mainland, island populations could maintain their ancestral genetic profiles. These islands then served as genetic reservoirs, helping to preserve ancient Greek lineages through difficult periods. Now comes the big question, how did the Greeks maintain their genetic heritage through so many invasions? Let's look at the major challenges they faced. The Roman conquest, beginning in 146 BC, was actually less disruptive genetically than one might expect. Romans were primarily interested in political control, not mass population replacement. Many Romans actually admired Greek culture and encouraged its preservation. Genetic studies show minimal Roman genetic impact on Greek populations. The situation was similar during the Byzantine period. Despite being part of a vast empire, the core Greek populations in the Aegean remained genetically stable. Even the arrival of Slavic peoples in the 6th and 7th centuries AD, which did have a genetic impact, didn't fundamentally alter the Greek genetic profile. Some Slavic ancestry was absorbed, particularly in northern Greece, but it typically represented only 10-20% to of the total ancestry. The Ottoman period, lasting from the 15th to 19th centuries, also left surprisingly little genetic impact. Despite over 400 years of Ottoman rule, genetic analysis shows minimal Turkish or other Ottoman genetic contribution to Greek populations. This preservation happened for several key reasons. First, geography played a crucial role. Greece's mountainous terrain and scattered islands created natural barriers to large-scale population replacement. Many Greek communities could retreat to defensible positions during invasions. Second, the Greek populations had developed strong cultural and religious identities that helped maintain group cohesion. The Orthodox Christian faith became particularly important for maintaining Greek identity during the Ottoman period. Third, most invaders were interested in political and economic control, not complete population replacement. It was often more practical to rule existing populations than to replace them entirely. Fourth, the maritime nature of Greek civilization meant many communities could escape by sea during invasions. This mobility allowed genetic lineages to survive, even when particular regions were overrun. Let's look at some specific genetic markers that show this continuity. Researchers have identified several genetic variants that are particularly common in Greeks, and have ancient origins in the region. One example is a variant associated with lactose tolerance that has a unique pattern in Greek populations. Another is immune system genes, that show continuity with ancient populations from the same region. These genetic markers act like fingerprints, showing the ancient roots of modern Greek populations. When we compare modern Greek DNA to ancient samples from the same regions, the similarities are striking. A 2017 study published in Nature compared modern Greeks to Mycenaeans and found remarkable genetic continuity. The study concluded that modern Greeks are largely descended from these ancient populations, with only minor additions from later periods. 
Similar studies comparing modern Greeks to other ancient populations from the region show the same pattern. Even during periods of apparent population decline, like the late Bronze Age collapse around 1200 BC, genetic continuity was maintained. This suggests that even when civilizations collapsed, the underlying populations often survived. Now let's address some common misconceptions about Greek genetics. One myth is that modern Greeks are not related to ancient Greeks because of all the invasions. As we've seen, genetic evidence strongly contradicts this idea. Another misconception is that Slavic invasions fundamentally changed the Greek genetic landscape. While Slavic ancestry is present, particularly in northern Greece, it represents a minority contribution to the overall genetic profile. Some people also believe that Ottoman rule led to significant Turkish genetic input. Again, genetic studies show this impact was minimal in most Greek populations. These misconceptions often arise from historical accounts that emphasize political and cultural changes, rather than actual population genetics. Political conquest doesn't necessarily mean genetic replacement. The genetic evidence paints a picture of remarkable continuity, despite political upheaval. Let's also examine how different regions of Greece show this continuity. The Peloponnese, home to ancient Sparta, shows strong genetic continuity with ancient populations. Attica, the region around Athens, similarly shows maintained ancestral lineages. Northern Greece, while having more Slavic input, still maintains a fundamentally Greek genetic profile. The Aegean Islands, as we discussed, show particularly strong continuity. Even regions that experience significant historical disruption maintain their core Greek genetic identity. This pattern is consistent across different types of genetic analysis, whether we look at autosomal DNA, mitochondrial DNA, or Y chromosomes, the story is the same. Modern Greeks are primarily descended from the populations that have lived in the region for thousands of years. Recent advances in ancient DNA analysis have made this picture even clearer. We can now extract and analyze DNA from remains thousands of years old. These studies consistently show genetic continuity in the Greek regions over remarkable time spans. For example, DNA from Bronze Age sites in Greece clusters closely with modern Greek populations. Even Neolithic samples, while more distant, show clear relationships to modern Greeks. Now let's delve deeper and analyze further if there are genetic links between Greeks and their neighbors. Even though Greeks share some similarities with their neighbors due to ancient history and living in the same region, they are actually genetically different from people in North Macedonia, Albania, and Turkey. Scientists have used advanced methods to study different types of DNA and the results consistently point to real differences that developed over thousands of years through separate population movements, migrations, and cultural barriers. The people living in North Macedonia today belong to the South Slavic group. Their language comes from the Slavic language family, and their history connects strongly to Slavic peoples who moved into the region about 1500 years ago. When researchers compare their DNA to that of Greeks, they find that North Macedonians have much more Slavic genetic background, their closest genetic relatives are actually Bulgarians and other Eastern Europeans. Multiple types of DNA testing show clear differences between North Macedonians and Greeks. Greeks, on the other hand, have a genetic makeup that's much closer to Southern Europeans, particularly Italians, and they show strong connections to the ancient peoples who lived around the Aegean Sea. Research by scientists like Triantaphilidis in 2025 found significant differences in four out of five key genetic markers when comparing Greeks to Bulgarians and North Macedonians. Albanians do have some shared ancient roots with Greeks, because both groups descended from early farming communities and Bronze Age tribes in the Balkans. However, Albanian populations form their own distinct genetic group, with high levels of specific DNA markers like J2B, L2, H3, and rare types of H12 that are much less common among Greeks. When scientists analyze thousands of genetic markers and plot them on charts. Albanians usually appear as a separate cluster from both Greeks and their Slavic and Mediterranean neighbors. These genetic differences became more pronounced after the Roman period, as Albanians maintained their local ancestry, especially in mountainous and remote areas, while Greek populations mixed more with peoples from the Aegean region, Anatolia, and later Mediterranean migrations. Even when Albanian groups like the Arvanites moved to Greece, Genetic mixing with Greeks only happened over recent centuries and didn't eliminate the deeper differences. Today's Turkish populations show a complex genetic mix from Europe, the Middle East, South Asia, and Central Asia. What makes modern Turks unique is their significant Central Asian genetic component, which comes from Turkic peoples who migrated during medieval times. 
Greeks almost completely lack this Central Asian ancestry. Instead, they show a Southern European genetic pattern with high levels of Aegean and Mediterranean markers. Studies of different DNA types demonstrate that Greeks don't share the genetic signatures typical of Turkish populations, even those living on Turkey's western coast. The genetic differences remain substantial, with some overlap only occurring in coastal areas that were historically influenced by Greek settlements. DNA studies from mothers' lineages across the Balkans show that Greeks have maintained continuity since Neolithic times, but this continuity isn't shared with modern North Macedonians, Albanians or Turks. Research on fathers' lineages reveals that Greeks, especially those in isolated island and mountain communities, have unique genetic frequencies compared to their neighbours. For example, certain genetic groups like EV13 are common in Greeks, but less so in North Macedonians and Albanians. Turkish populations show strong genetic signals from Central Asia, West Asia and South Asia that are absent in Greek DNA. Large studies examining thousands of genetic markers confirm these patterns. If you found this genetic discovery interesting, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into human history and genetics. What aspect of Greek genetic history surprised you most? Drop a comment below and let me know what other populations you'd like to see covered in future videos. Remember, every time we analyse ancient DNA, we're literally reading the story of our ancestors written in their genes. And the Greek story is one of the most compelling chapters in that ongoing book of human history.